Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about Disk Station Manager. More precisely, I want to show you the difference of Disk Station Manager on a weaker and more powerful Synology NAS because as good as the software is from Synology and fair play to them, they have invested heavily in it. There's no denying that Synology NAS runs better and DSM in general on a more powerful NAS. It, makes, it takes advantage of all the CPU and memory available but the more you've got, the better you get. And today, I want to answer two questions really more than anything. One, how well does DS419 Slim, that 4 by Slim NAS that's just been released, it's got an ARM 32-bit dual-core 1.3 gigahertz CPU and what 512 um, gigab uh, megabytes of memory, compares against a much more streamlined and flagship series NAS like the 2419 Plus, which is a quad-core Intel CPU uh, with 2 gig of memory. So we're going to look at DSM on both of these devices, but what I want you to really focus on is the right hand side of the screen over here, because this is the one that we want to bench test. DSM already runs pretty damn well on this one here. And you may notice immediately straight off the bat two things. One, the fact that it says activate Windows. Once you've had Windows running on as many machines as I have, you can never get it right. Anyone that's ever had a 10 license pack will know exactly what I mean. But secondly, looking at this red bar. Now, I did contemplate making this video um, in a far more um, unusing way. But the problem with uh, your first hit with the DS419 Slim is once you run more than about four or five applications, that CPU is always going to be high. However, it still runs damn well, even with this up here. So I'm going to leave it be for now, but do remember that this CPU is like this because we've got so many applications running at once in preparation for this video. In the interest of showing you all the different things you have on a NAS like this, I thought it worthy to go through them all, and unfortunately, prepping for this video has ramped up that CPU somewhat. So, straight away, if we go into the device itself, we can have a look at the uh, pr uh, package center because the first thing you'll notice is there are more applications available to you on a more powerful NAS. Synology have a tendency to not include applications in a NAS's um, app selection unless it's powerful enough to support them. So <clears throat> the likes of active backup for business will not be available on a weaker machine like this. Things like chat will be <clears throat> and audio station, file station and more, those kind of staple applications will always be available. But more business based ones such as those active backup um, applications, more intense server ones and more disappear straight away. If we scroll down and we look more at the multimedia ones, we see straight away that big, big player applications like Plex, Virtualization Station and more are long gone. Um, as are things like Docker, which aren't um, hugely present, although we scroll to the bottom, and we've got still got a lot of applications available, but nowhere near as many or as deep or as business orientated as they are on this. But there is Plex Media Server, although things like transcoding are definitely not supported. If we want to install an application on either of these, we will just click install, and then it installs the application in the background. And it's that straightforward, as you can see, even though CPU utilization is very high, it's still running pretty fluid. It has to be said, there's also support of the surveillance station application, Moments, Drive, Office, all of those applications that Synology sing praises about are present here. <clears throat> now, moving forward, sore throat there, we can have a look at the apps themselves and how they run. Now, I've already, as I say, mentioned a, and installed a bunch of applications and synchronized them and indexed them for content. So if we look at Moments, We'll look at Video Station. And finally, if we get that open there, we will look at Drive. Likewise, on this one, I'm not sure if all those applications are installed, but we'll give it a go. We will look at Drive. Get that open there. And again, do, I do apologize for any lag during the recording. That is largely due to the recording software I'm using on this PC and how the PC has to battle all of that available um, GPU power as much as possible. Um, but if we move across there, we can look at Synology Drive, and Synology Drive looks very, very similar on the pair of these uh, devices. They run very well indeed, but it has to be said that file streaming uh, from the drive interface runs a great deal better 
on the more powerful NAS. Don't worry too much about the list of files and folders, it's more to do with the directory there. And how quickly these both run and how quickly they play files is pretty similar indeed. If we go for a video file here, let's go for a TV show. What's the first one? Friday Night Dinner, so we're going to double click that. And even though it's got to this point where it's asked me to install the codec, it still loaded it pretty quick. If we go into the TV shows one on this one, Friday Night Dinner, and there's the codec option. But we worry too much about the codec side of things. But as you can see, they both ran at pretty much the same length of time to get that file open. If we look at Video Station, I've already started indexing all the thumbnails in the background on this slim device. Again, it's even though it's a quite low spec NAS server, it still has managed to do all of this very quickly indeed, with this device only been up and running now for around three hours, um, from initial initialization all the way through to right now. And with all of those files and the thumbnail generation, everything in the background being ripped, Again, even on this low spec NAS, it still managed to get the metadata on those descriptions and lots of information about this device, uh, about this file that we're looking at. Next, if we make our way through to the next area, we can look at Synology Moments. Now, Synology Moments is one of the ones that really impressed me. I've had to uninstall it on this NAS on the left due to my drive synchronization video, but despite the fact that this NAS is fantastically underpowered compared to a number of its brethren, it still managed to index and find photos very quickly within those hours. And once again, for those that have never used Drive, it's very straightforward. It um, recognizes faces and it lets you index, index these people. So in case I put R there for Robbie, find it, it merged those together. And again, that photo recognition software, because remember, this information was not found because my name was in the file uh, that was being seen. It was done because it recognized faces within the photos and there's still 312 photos yet to be scanned which are happening right now so more faces will be added over time likewise places due to geolocational tagging and identifying marks in photos it has also managed to find and sequence and display all this information in a way that we want so when i was in berlin with friends now we've got all of my photos from when i was in berlin even though these files are not called what they are there's just a photo there we can get information on the side we can go straight into information and from here we can find out more about the device that took the picture and the location lots of information there and again that's just another example of how even with its limited resources Synology NAS has managed to really take as much as possible out of this device now if we move over to the side here we can have a look at um, the resource monitor and how resources are being consumed by this device in real time. Moving the packet center there, going to the resource monitor here, and we can see how those resources are being consumed, how and where, in fact. Because straight away, obviously, but due to the sequencing of things like moment in the background and more, lots of the resources are going to be eaten up but don't lose sight of the fact that this is still within the initial few hours of setup and this NAS is still running pretty damn well for a device that I'm currently offloading over a hundred gig of files onto and indexing in moments and indexing in video station it's worth mentioning that of course you've got the likes of surveillance station as an application and all of those other apps available to you immediately so although it's not as you know, prolific in its applications as a number of the plus series from Synology, the DS419 Slim still does give you quite a lot under the bonnet. And remember, with RAID support, SHR support, and other features built into it, although no BTRFS, it's still a great NAS and still manages to give you a really, really good user experience from a Synology NAS and definitely better than that of the likes of the DS119J. Don't get me wrong, if you're looking at business, if you're looking at more than about 10 to 15 users accessing the NAS regularly. And if you're going to be in widespread backups to multiple devices, as you can see, the CPU has now gone down significantly, then this may not be the device for you. And you will need to look 
and Intel based uh, power devices like the 2419 plus but nevertheless this has been a comparison of DSM on uh, the some might say weaker DS419 slim and how it compares with this station manager on more established and flagship models i hope you've enjoyed it i hope it answered your questions and if you want to know more put a message in the comments below but otherwise click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to support this channel and i'll see you next time